Once again, the do in background method is where we'll perform our web service call to obtain data. And in this case, we're going to be using the weather bug web services get forecast method, which is going to give back a, a number of days worth of forecasts that you specify. And the parameter that specifies the number of days forecast is actually this highlighted piece. Uh, NF stands for number of forecasts. And I have it set uh, hard coded to seven here, even though we're only displaying five. So really, we should set this to five. And in fact, probably should use our constant that we defined back at the top of the class, number of days, to specify that so it matches up exactly. And we don't retrieve additional data that's not necessary. Now, I've already gone ahead and put a sample URL into my web browser here. So this is the data that comes back and I'll come back to look at this in a moment. Let's go back over to the Weatherbug web API documentation page and we're actually working with the seven day forecast part of their API and here you can see the description of all the different parameters that you can supply and as they do with any of the other APIs they show you a sample call and a sample of what gets returned. Now let's take a look at a live sample here and you can see that we receive back a JavaScript object. Here's the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace of that object. And the object actually contains two keys, the forecast list, which is an array of forecast information for whatever number of days you requested. And then separately, there's also the temperature units uh, key value pair indicating that uh, the information is coming back in degrees Fahrenheit in this case. Now all we are concerned with in the example are the elements of the forecast list. So you'll see in our processing that once we start processing our JavaScript object, uh, we'll get the forecast list, then we'll start processing the array of objects and then the individual objects within that array. So coming back over here to our do and background method, once again we create a input stream reader that reads data from the stream that's uh, connected to the specified URL that makes the request to the web service and gets back a stream of data. And once again, at line 60, we create a JSON reader to read the character information from that string. And we call the readers begin object method to start reading the first JSON object and actually the only JSON object, the, the, the uh, one object that's returned contains a bunch of others uh, to start reading that object. So at line 65, we get the next name from that object, which is the next key for the uh, first key value pair in this case. And assuming it's the string forecast list, which we've put into our strings.xml file, then we begin processing the array that is returned for that key. So if you take a look again at the sample data, forecast list has a value which is an array and then within that array is our first object that we need to process. So uh, we go into the array and the first thing we do is uh, skip today's forecast, which is the first object within that array uh, because we actually only care about the next day and five days total forward after that. So uh, we skip the first object in the array. Then we begin reading uh, the next object. And for whatever number of days we're going to read, when we're reading that object, we're going to see if there's a next key value pair. And if there is a next key value pair, we're going to assign to forecast sub i the result of read daily forecast with the JSON reader as an argument. And basically, uh, when we go look at that method in a subsequent video, you'll see that we do our uh, reading of the individual fields within that JSON object and extracting the data so that we can obtain the daily forecast information. And once we're all done, we close our JSON reader and then the do and background method returns, which enables us to uh, call the onPostExecute method in the GUI thread to display the data.